the blinds. The lights. And it's too dark, so don't worry about it. We're on. Should I have it on Can you read it? So okay. we'll live? It. We're good. All right. We are live. This is a Marcotti First Friday. And this is our third installment of the monthly. And uh, we are going to talk about arpeggi playing techniques today. And uh, we're live on a couple different social media platforms, I believe. We're on uh, Facebook. We're also on Instagram. And I'm just going to run through the various techniques of how to play the instrument so that you have a little bit of a library of techniques that you can draw from. And I'm going to start off with this side with uh, ways of playing single notes, starting with the attack of the note and then moving on to things you do during the sustained portion of the note. And then over here we're going to start talking about um, sequential notes. And then lastly I got a little bonus section down here which is some of the percussive things that you can do with the harpeggi. Okay, so the first up to bat here is tapping, right? The normal tapping. And the way you tap is uh, simply to uh, impart some energy onto the string by tapping it onto the fret. And I get a lot of questions from uh, potential customers about how hard is that? Is it, is it uncomfortable? Is it difficult to play? I know a lot of people suffer from arthritis, tendonitis, and all sorts of itises that I'm not familiar with because I'm not a doctor, but um, they would like to know how hard, how difficult is it to first make a note and second to, to hold it. Um, and all I can say without demonstrating it for you live is that it's very comfortable to me. Um, it's similar to the, the motions that you would make if you were typing on a computer keyboard. So when somebody sends me an email and asks me if it's comfortable, my first question is, well, was it comfortable when you typed that email to me? Because that's a very similar hand motion to playing the harpeggi. It's, uh, it's not difficult. The action is very, uh, very close. When we talk about action, we're talking about how high the string is relative to the fret. And it's pretty close. And you can tell, I think, just by looking at my fingers that they're not in you know, any sort of uh, you know, difficult position. So um, I would also recommend if you have a friend with a guitar or maybe you have a guitar, just tap on the, on the fretboard of the guitar and, and see if that feels comfortable or uncomfortable to you. But anyway, you do have to give it um, a little bit of a snap when you, when you do it. It's, it's not just touching, okay? It's, it's, it's like tapping on a desk, right? Similar to that. Okay, and that is the normal way that we play the harpeggi. That's the normal way we tap it. Okay, that's all what I would call standard normal tapping. Okay, there's another kind of tapping which is muted tapping, and that's something that I like to do a lot, and that's where Instead, oh, and I should say with normal tapping, you want to aim for the note marker, right? Your fingers should be above the note marker. If you're playing way down here, then you risk um, rattling, you know, fret buzz uh, above that. So you want to aim right where we gave you the note marker. Okay, back to, to muted tapping. Muted tapping gives you a more round sound, okay? You hear how that sounds different then? By the way, if anybody has any questions or comments, please feel uh, free to comment live and somebody will wave me down if there is a, uh, a question or a comment that I can address. Okay, so how do you do this muted tapping? Well, um, the way I do it is I get my finger beyond the fret. So the um, fleshy part of my fingertip is on the vibrating part of the string, which is the part between my finger and the bridge up there. Okay, and so I can do like a whole thing like this, watch. That's, that's fun for me because it's just a, a totally, it almost sounds like a different instrument when you play that way. Okay, so we talked about normal tapping, we talked about muted tapping. Now I'm going to talk about strumming. Um, if I'm doing a chord, right, I can, I can do that for the attack of the note. I'll just 
quietly fret the uh, the chord, right? And then I'll do that. And I'm, and I'm fretting, in that case, I'm, I'm doing it with my, my fingertips. Okay? And that's how I get that attack. I also can do a different attack, which is to use my fingernails. And when I do my fingernails, I'll go like this. Right? And you can even do it up here. And it gives a different tone, more of a, a brighter tone. And we'll talk more about rhythmic strumming, but for now, I'm just focusing on the attack of the note. You can start at normal tapped, muted tapped, strum with your, your fingernails, your fingertips strummed with your fingernails, and you can also do slap strumming, which is like this. Okay, I'm playing a C chord down here, and on the left side of the instrument, and I just slap it, okay? And that's another way to excite the strings and start the attack of the note, okay? Last thing I want to talk about is what I call the tap and pluck simultaneous, okay? And that's when maybe you're playing a lead line, right? And, and so you sort of tap it and then pluck it just, just barely, like milliseconds after you tap it. Okay? That's a little bit more difficult because you gotta, you know, have a little bit of timing there. So, so I, I, I fret the note, I sort of tap it, and then I immediately, uh, you know, slap it with my other hand. Okay, so that's what I call the tap plus pluck, and that's when you are usually playing a lead line or something like that. Okay, so that, that all covers sort of the initial excitation of the note. Now we're going to talk about things that you do during the sustain portion of the note, okay, which is after you've already got the string vibrating, what, what can you do? Um, and let's talk about bending. We can bend in a single direction, like I was just doing. Okay, I was bending up, right? Okay, and that's just uh, bending up. The other thing you can do with bending is where it's um, it's sort of oscillating, and we call that a vibrato, right? So, and one thing I'd like to point out to people is that when you're doing a bend or a vibrato, you want to reduce your downward pressure on the fret. You don't want to dig into the fret and wear your frets down un, you know, needlessly. You, uh, you want to have less friction this way um, when you're doing a bend so that you have the freedom to bend more and the friction is not working against you. A lot of people, you know, they, they think they're digging into the note and so they want to dig down into the fret. Don't do that. So I'm actually reducing the pressure when I do this vibrato, okay? All right, so that covered vibrato and single direction bending. Um, now I'm going to talk about harmonics. Uh, a harmonic is, uh, a lot of guitarists are familiar with that, but you know, you can, you can play a note and then, did you hear that? Different harmonics will jump out when you hit the string at different points. And what's really cool about the harpeggi and harmonics is that you can, you know, once you understand the note navigation system on the harpeggi, you can know where to find that harmonic, okay? So for example, I'm playing a C right here, and I, my eyes went all the way up to the C above that other open, uh, open white marker there, silver marker. You hear that? So you can, you can, the, the note navigation system also is a navigation system for your harmonics. You can know where to, uh, to hit it. So here's, here's a C and that's an F, that's on the G, that's on the C. There's different points all along the string and whatever, you know, is right for your song, your song ending, um, you can uh, just memorize if like you're going to, you know, play a song and then at the very end, you know, you're going to end on a C chord, and then you want to hit harmonic, 
right? You just you just remember that note. So when you're when you're composing the song, you just remember where it is that you're going to hit the harmonic, okay? So that's the harmonics. Now we'll talk about sliding, okay? And for now, I'll just talk about sliding up to or down to, right? Um, if you're playing um, uh, a lead line and uh, that's the last line, you might just do that where you're just kind of randomly sliding down to nothingness, okay? And you can also do it the other way. And then we'll talk later about note to note, okay? So now we've covered all of the basic things for just a single note. And, and I hope that you're impressed so far about all of the different ways you can play a single note on the harpeggi. If you think about, if you just took, you know, uh, the piano is a, is a highly expressive instrument, right? And if you think about just looking at middle C on a piano, just look at the middle C key of the piano, and how many ways can you play that middle C key on your piano, right? Even though it's a very expressive and awesome instrument, um, you know, there's only so many ways you can play that one note. So um, what we're trying to give you here is lots of, of different ways to play a single note. Now we're going to go on and get a little bit more advanced for this video, and we're going to talk about sequences of notes, okay? And ways that you can play sequences of notes on the harpeggi. So we were talking about strumming, okay? That's just one way to get an attack. And if we do a pattern, That, that was the, the, the finger the fingertip style. And then I told you about slap strumming before. And there, <clears throat> there I was doing two techniques. I was doing sliding and also uh, slap strumming. Okay, another thing that you can do is um, what I call a thumb tap with a driving pluck, okay? So, let's say you're playing a C and you want to keep that going. So I do that in the song Rain Dance, which you can find on YouTube, where I go... So my thumb is holding the note and usually giving it the first bit of excitation, you know, with the tap. And then I'm using my pointer finger to just... So get up real close on that if you can. So you see bass players do that, right? They're fretting with their left hand and then they're doing this type of a thing, although they're playing this way, right? That's how a bass player would do it on a bass guitar, but based on how the harpeggio is oriented, that's how we do the same thing. And this is a lot of fun if you have the K24 because you can um, you can get the real the real deep bass notes and do that. Okay? So that's what I call a driving pluck. Alright? You can also scratch that out like this. See the strings, the bass strings on the harpeggi are wound and they have that. So it's kind of fun to um, maybe like intermix a little bit of scratching with the normal sort of plucking. Okay, so that's what I call scratching. All right, now here's another thing about the harpeggi, which is it's pretty unique to the harpeggi where you have the same note in multiple places um, quite, quite close by. Um, not too many instruments have that, and on the harpeggi, like, if this is a C, here's another C right there. Right? All the same notes go this way. So you can see there's multiple instances of, of every note, and you can use that to your advantage if you're playing a song by going like this. So I call that same note trills, where you're trilling on the same note. 
Now I'll show you how to do a pull-off. Um, in the guitar world, they call this, they call this a hammer-on. Um, we call it tapping, okay? So in, in the guitar world, it's hammer-ons and pull-offs. So that's a hammer-on. where you go and as you pull off you're kind of like giving the string a little flick so that the note that's behind it uh, can can come back so I have the C chord on the bottom right So that's sort of like the droning chord behind everything. And then I take these two strings and I go, and I flick it back to C. And then I come up here. So the important part is to, to flick, flick off of it so that you're giving the string a little bit more energy and, um, and that root chord will come out, okay? That is what a pull-off is called. Grace notes. Um, on a piano, um, you can play grace notes and typically you're doing a whole tone or a, uh, or a chromatic grace note, okay? So think of the song Amazing Grace. You can play it sort of straight. Right? Or you can do it with a grace note. Right? Okay. And there I actually did two grace notes, right? Where I, I'm, the, the note is actually E, but I go. So the C and the D are both grace notes, like that. And um, the reason I, I wanted to make sure this was included, a lot of um, harpeggi players come from keyboard or, back, uh, keyboard or piano backgrounds, and they're used to um, having fun with grace notes, and this is something you can absolutely do, and I do a lot on my harpeggi. Okay. Um, next we have sliding note to note. Before I was talking about just... Sliding off a note or, or sliding off a note that way. Um, but you can also do sort of plan slides um, from, from, uh, from note to note. And um, like, uh, actually like that other thing I was doing. Right, where I'm planning to slide from a G to an A. there right and you can also do that with chords where you're you're um, you know you might take a, a C chord and slide it up to F and an F up to G back down to C That's a fixed fingering sort of a, of a, a chord slide, right? Because if you notice there, when I went from C to F, um, I've got my C chord fingering, which is the same as an F chord position, position which is the same as a G chord. So, so if you notice, my finger shape is staying the same. C. But you can also do what I call a shifted fingering, where um, the thing that you're sliding to might not be the same chord. It might be just a different harmony or something like that. Um, so I do that, like, I'll, I'll give you an example of that. Um, in this song, I have to remember this song, hang on. doing there 
there. I'm, I'm on a C chord, right? And I'm starting on C and E. Right? I'm going. So what happened there was um, I've got a C and an E, which is a major uh, chord interval, right? Makes it a major chord. And then I'm sliding it up to kind of like the next part of the C chord, which would be E to G. Well, E to G is not a major third. It happens to be a minor third, uh, both parts of a C chord. But because <clears throat> it goes from one type of an interval to a different type of an interval, I have to change my fingering as I slide. So I'm actually on the same fret as I'm on C and E. And then as I slid up, I just kind of shifted my, le my pointer finger forward to get a different position, right? And then again, um, for the final position, I'm G to E, which is a major fourth. And in that case, my middle finger needs to slide forward. So. Okay, so that would be a shifted fingering sliding chord. All right, <clears throat> now for the bonus section, we're gonna review uh, some percussive elements of the harpeggi, and there's different uh, sort of percussion sounds that are not really notes, but more just pure percussion. And the first one I'll just call an open slap. So even though there is electronic muting on the harpeggi, electronic muting, what it does is it doesn't turn the pickups on until you've fretted a note, right? If you walk up to a harpeggi and do this, you can't hear anything. As soon as you fret some notes, you hear it, right? So even though we're, we're doing that electronic muting business sort of behind the scenes, it's quick enough and it responds quickly enough that you can just quickly do all this fun stuff and it instantaneously triggers and allows for you uh, to do that slap. That's how quick the electronic muting is on the arpeggio, all right? So you just walk up and slap it like that, and that's what I call an open slap. All right, there's another kind of a slap where, you know, where you're getting more of a, you know, more of a thump kind of a sound. And to get that sound, you want to be sort of higher up, uh, sort of like in the middle of the vibrating part of the string. And I'm fretting it down here so that um, uh, so that you can, you know, so that I'm triggered already. <clears throat> and then the final uh, percussion sound would be a saddle thump. You might have seen some videos with uh, Mathieu uh, Tarad in France where he'll he'll reach up and he'll just knock right on that on that saddle, right? You can use your ring. Okay, and the, <coughs> the pickups of the harpeggi are actually embedded inside the string saddle. We have piezo pickups in here and that's why when you not directly on the saddle, um, you're gonna get um, a different uh, a different louder sort of a sound. Okay, so we have reviewed all the ways to, uh, to start a note, right? You can start by tapping. Normally, you can start by tapping muted. You can start by strumming with your fingertips. You can start by strumming with your fingernail can do a tap and pluck. For the sustained part, you can uh, bend in one direction. You can bend back and forth with a vibrato. You can hit harmonics. You can slide up to a note. You can slide down to a note. Okay, and then we have our, our uh, sequence of note uh, techniques, rhythmic strumming. 
We have the thumb, the thumb tap with a driving plug. We can scratch it. We have our, our, our same note trills. Sliding note to note. We have our sliding chords, fixed fingering. We have our shifted fingering, right? Remember that? It's where your fingering ends up in a different place. And then we have our open slap. We have our fretted thump. And then we have our saddle thumb. And those are most of the techniques. I'm sure there are some that I, I forgot today, but these are, uh, are the major ones. And you can see lots of examples of these on YouTube if you look at videos in particular by Mathieu, Tarad, uh, myself, Carlos uh, Rogerman, um, Corey Henry, Stevie Wonder, etc. Lots of people uh, making harpeggi videos and using a lot of these techniques. Um, were there any questions from the crowd? Uh, well, there was one. I'm not sure I understand it completely, but Jeffrey uh, Boyan asked, in win for harpeggi scores? This is such a great video. Um, maybe he's asking if there have been harpeggi scores made or... Um, if you're talking about harpeggi, written harpeggi music, what I would say is that you don't need special uh, sheet music to play the harpeggi. You can use sheet music that already exists for classical guitar or for piano. Um, you can you can use that sheet music. You can also use chord charts, right? Because chord charts are, are fairly independent. A guitarist and a piano player can use the same chord chart to play the same song. Um, you can also play by ear. So there's sort of three ways that you can uh, learn to play someone else's song by sheet music, by chord charts, and by playing by ear. Um, if that was the question, if the question was about are there are there harpeggi scores that exist for, uh, uh, I don't know if that meant a like a film score or if that meant a uh, symphony or that kind of a thing, um, but I don't know of any uh, complete, um, you know, written classical harpeggi. Uh, songs that were, you know, conceived of on a harpeggi, but um, most of the, of the songs that you, uh, that you will find on YouTube of the harpeggi are either in an improvisation or somebody that's covering another song. Any other, any other questions? No, not that I see. Okay, if, if, uh, if anybody um, wants to talk about, uh, give us some suggestions for uh, next week's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, next month's uh, first Friday, please go ahead and keep coming. Uh, uh, oh, someone actually did just ask, um, okay. Adam Herring, how worthwhile is a U12? Worthwhile is a U12. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question, Adam. I get asked this um, all the time. Um, let's just, I always say, let's start with the G16 because the G16 is the top seller. The G16 is what you see played on stage most often by people like Stevie Wonder, um, Corey Henry, uh, Matthew. Um, that is uh, the, the, most, the most used instrument, uh, certainly on stage and on videos. Um, it's a four octave instrument. It has a range which is similar to a guitar. It's got four octaves, C2, to C6, okay? It actually plays a little bit deeper than a guitar. The lowest note on a guitar is this E, but ours goes down to D and C, okay? That's the G16. If you wanna have more fun, go with the K24. The K24 has a lot more bass. Um, it plays down to the lowest note on a piano, A0, which gives you a full extra octave. 
and um, it also uh, also gives you more a little bit more width overall on any given fret uh, for your uh, for your hands to move around. Um, the reason to get a U12 is is for uh, for budget reasons, right? It's it's the least expensive, and um, it has an octave less than a guitar would. Um, so I would think of it like imagine if uh, if you were playing a six string guitar and you didn't have like the top string or maybe the top two strings, right? You could still do a lot of things, but you'd be limited in your note range. Um, so I recommend um, the U12 only if it's, uh, it's, if it's for, for budget reasons. It's a great instrument, it sounds great, it has great tone, um, but it's, uh, it's also more of a beginner sort of instrument. Uh, or if, if another reason to go with the U12 is it, perhaps you're just going to play leads with it. You know, maybe you're not accompanying yourself or being the main player in a song. If you're in a band that has a lot of instruments, and let's say you're going to uh, mostly focus on leads, and that's 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 a, a good reason to get a U12. All great instruments, um, but start with the G16, and then ask yourself: Do you want more bass, uh, or do you want less cost? And that's how you should make your decision. Um, Andrew Nance did ask: What is the range of a K24? The range of a K24 is from A0 to A5. And um, so I, I can't play A0 because I'm on a G16 here, but A5 would be here. That would be A5 on a K24. Um, and then it would play down to here, uh, A0. Okay. Uh, oh, Matthew Charad said hi to oh. the team. <laughs> hey, Matthew. Good that you could join us. Do you have any questions, Matthew? Or maybe, maybe you should be the answer man since you're the Harpeggi expert. <laughs> Not sure if everybody knows who Matthew is, but most people should. Yeah. No questions on Instagram, but a lot of people have said hello to you. Yeah. Good, good. Well, we're glad you can join us. I know a lot of people will be watching this after it's live, and again, you can make comments anytime afterwards, uh, while after it's you know pre-recorded. Um, Adam Herring did ask, "Will there be a fourth arpeggi?" Uh. The plan is to just have three models, um, and and that's uh, that's what we got: the U12, the G16, and K24. We have no plans to ever have four models. Someone asked about the cost. The cost of the the current harpeggies are, uh, and, and you should. I hope you know by now from uh, watching our last live video, or maybe two two live videos ago, um, we dropped prices for 2018 based upon the, uh, uh, the cost savings that we have uh, uh, worked on for the last probably 18 months. We've made the mm -hmm. shop a lot more efficient. Mm -hmm. Prices are uh, $39.99 or $4,000 for the K24, $2,500 for the G16, and then $1,500 for the U12. We also have a special guest today. If uh, Chris could pan the camera over to Alec, who's holding our Instagram camera. <laughs> Alec uh, Park has never Hello. been on our uh, our live videos, and he is one of the guys that works here to build harpeggies in the shop. And he's been with us for almost a year now. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was the last May or June, I think, that Alec started. Yep. So we're glad to have him for his first live video and helping out with the iPad. Any other questions? I got a hello from from Glenarm. Proud of you all. Oh, it's hometown. Oh, cool. Me wow. Meckles Steckles? Yeah, it was his hometown. All right. So proud of you all. Very um, good. Matthew wants to know if you can play, um, is it Alouette? No, I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. I, I cannot play. I have not learned that song. I wouldn't want to try to like fake it in front of tens of thousands of people. <laughs> um, but going back to the previous comment, um, we are in Glenarm, Maryland, and we would love to have you come see the shop if your travels bring you to the Maryland area. Um, we give demos here all the time, and um, we'd be glad to, uh, to, to do that for you. And, you know, you might get lucky. You might get a free T-shirt out of it. You might get uh, a free CD out of it. Uh, people tend to walk out of here with, um, uh, with, with gifts from Mark Cody. Uh, can't promise that we're going to have your size, but we always try. We have a question from Cadillac 6000. Can you customize all three sizes? 
Yes, um, all three um, models of the Harpeggi can be fully customized. You can change their wood material, um, various paint jobs, various trim. This, this has some interesting trim. This is zebra shell trim, right, which is uh, not uh, common, um, but pretty cool looking. Um, the, uh, the one, the U12 is a little bit more limiting because it has a separate marker board. Um, and so it's a little bit trickier to do things like sunbursts with uh, the U12. Nobody's ever actually asked for a sunburst on a U12. We, we, could, we could probably figure out if we, um, if we wanted to. But um, no, you can do all kinds of stains. I think the only color that we've never done so far is orange. We've done red, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, gray, every brown you can imagine. This is actually a cranberry stain on this one. This is Scotty's G16. This was kind of cool because Scotty, um, not too long after starting to work here, um, noticed that we had this um, uh, defective body laying around. And he kept looking at it, looking at it, and then he decided that he was going to claim it and give it some life. And so um, this, this was a body that had been abused by, uh, by sitting in... Um, freezing temperatures for more than two winters um, and it uh, so it had some some hairline cracks in it and we decided not to use it as a for a customer but um, after lots of uh, operations with uh, super glue and clamps and braces and things like that on the inside we turned it into a perfectly functional and actually a really good sounding arpeggi and it was a very good learning experience for Scotty and what's that oh get another question Okay. Yeah. Um, Andrew asks again, what is the most durable material material you make the harpeggi out of versus what is the best sounding material? Uh, well, let's start with durable. If you're going to uh, abuse your harpeggi by leaving it in your car in Minnesota overnight or maybe for a <laughs> whole weekend and, you know, musical instruments of any kind shouldn't be left in cars in the heat, in the cold, right? They really need to be indoors. Um, it's not a good idea. I mean, if it's a spring day and it's 60 degrees outside, that's fine. But if it's, you know, minus 10 uh, degrees or if it's, you know, 120 degrees inside your car, it's not good to have your instrument in there, okay? But if you're one of those people who kind of forgets, is forgetful, and you're going to, you know, you might do that one day and you're worried about how is the harpeggi going to um, uh, deal with that, I would go with maple. Maple is going to be certainly the most, and, and we found this over the years just by watching how, um, how materials behave on the shelf and, and in different situations. Um, I would say maple is going to have the best long-term stability and the least propensity for cracking and delamination. Um, and uh, that's, so that's in terms of durability. In terms of sound, very, very small differences between our materials. Um, uh, I'll tell you my opinion. We have little disagreements in the shop as to, you know, <laughs> you know how things sound. But my opinion is that the bamboo sounds the brightest, the most acoustic, and that the birch sounds the darkest and that the maple's in, in between. Um, the difference that you're going to get from new strings versus old strings is way more of a difference than the difference that you're going to hear uh, between uh, this wood or that wood. Um, I would not, I wouldn't make my decision on a harpeggi based on the sonic differences between woods. It is a solid body instrument, so there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, I would make my decision based on durability, and I would make my decision based upon cosmetics. The bamboo is definitely uh, the richest and the coolest edge. I'll, I'll show you this one. Here's a cool example of one that we're working on right now. It's in the middle of a paint job, so don't judge us on the sheen and all that. But this is a cool bamboo one where you can see the striking edge. Okay, so we have, it's actually a three layer material. It's got this core that's dark and then the two lighter sides. And then the way we get the fourth and fifth layers is by doing carefully masked staining. Okay, so we have the, uh, the black, the light, the brown, the light, and then the black. So that's a really cool, and the, and the inner layer has got that really neat kind of marbly sort of suede kind of look, which is really cool. And so that's, that's, that's a tangible reason to pick one material over another.
Are there more questions? How often do we need to replace the strings? Joe Blackwell Clark asks. Okay, a lot of people ask me the question, how long before the strings break? Well, the strings almost never break. If you're, if you're talking about the K24, the top string on the K24 is really tight, and it's so tight that sometimes uh, it breaks. Usually it's when you're installing it or if we ship it with the, the string in its normal pitch. It, it does have a tendency to break. So we have to detune it before we, we ship it. Detune that top string to the note that's just adjacent to it. Um, but uh, on a G16, on a U12, strings don't really break almost ever. Uh, but what happens is they get older and they sound duller and they get harder to slide because um, of corrosion, right? And as the strings corrode, they, uh, they become more rough, and then when you go to do a slide, it just feels a little more, uh, a little, has more friction, okay? And so, if you use uh, the wipes that we provide, um, so Ernie Ball makes these, uh, these string cleaning wipes, and we, we give a couple of loose wipes to everybody to get started so that they know what product to buy. Um, that's what we use to clean the strings, and it's also important to clean the strings of the harpeggio because you need clean strings to have good electrical contact, and you need good electrical contact to let the mute circuits trigger properly, right? You want to, if, if they're not properly um, triggering, when you go to uh, fret a note, it won't, the pickup won't turn on. So we just, you just have to make sure that you keep your strings clean and playing the harpeggio will also uh, clean the contact area between the strings and the frets because as you're playing and doing vibrato and, and bending, you're actually scraping away that top layer of uh, otherwise invisible corrosion and then you're restoring that electrical contact uh, to, uh, to, uh, to make it clean and good again. Adam Herring asks, uh, what is the deluxe trim material? Um, our standard trim material is gloss black, and we keep um, some trim in here. Um, and so, I mean, you all know what gloss black looks like, but here's an example just because I'm talking about it. Um, it has a peel coat on it, but you can see on the edge there, it's just a nice uh, glossy black acrylic. Okay. So that's, that comes standard. That is not um, extra cost. We, we also have... A variety of uh, trim materials like like this one, zebra shell. Anything that's not gloss black would be considered a custom order, um, and uh, that's one example. Um, I'll pull out some other examples. Uh, Perloids are very popular, and this right here is a parchment colored perloid. Right, uh, a lot of these. Just so you know, they have a, um, a sort of a frosted peel coat on it but you can see the, uh, the parchment perloid. Um, this is a white pearl. This is a silver perloid. This is a uh, tortoise, right? And you can see that we, we write our customers on there as we uh, earmark them, okay? And if you want to see the full list of possibilities for deluxe trim, I would invite you to go to pickguardian.com. It's like the word pick guard for a guitar. Pickguardian.com and click on their material section. We buy our custom trim from Pick Guardian because they have all kinds of materials that we might buy one of. I don't want to keep a whole sheet of silver perloid around uh, because I might only sell one of these per six months or something like that. So go to PickGuardian.com and look at all of their materials, and we can have PickGuardian make um, that for you in any color that you would like to have. Okay. So Brandon, is it Patterson? He wants to know if you can play us a song. Maybe you can close it out. Sure. Let's close it out in a song, and um, I'll, I'll finish up with, um, uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll do that. Um, I'll, do, I'll do Rain Dance. Oh, I gotta turn my volume on. 